Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Good Orderly Direction, Practical Tools of the Bible. Today, in Meditations for Mental Health, we're going over Galatians 6, verses 7 and 8. I'm your host, Dr. Donnelly Snipes. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. The one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Okay, well, so that sounds wonderful, but what does that mean to you and me? You know, what are we supposed to get out of that? Well, let's break it down. There are three parts to this. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that he will also reap. We have talked about good orderly direction and creating the body of Christ on earth, creating heaven on earth by following the principles of good orderly direction. So think about it. If you are in a community in which people are prudent, they are enduring, they're truthful, they're compassionate, all those wonderful things that embody love, that's great. But if there's somebody in that community, that bad apple, if you will, that is not following those principles, that is gluttonous, that is um, angry all the time, that is lustful and not keeping those things in check, then what happens to the community? Generally, the community if they're following good orderly direction, would recognize that it is not prudent to continue to associate with that person. That person needs to either join up or find another group to join that will support those behaviors. The community will start with trying to correct those behaviors. It's not an automatic, hey, you don't play by our rules, kick to the curb. The community is going to be compassionate with the person. The community is going to act selflessly, but they are also going to protect themselves. And they're going to say, okay, if you want to be a part of this group, then there are certain behaviors that are expected from you. And having lust and wrath and gluttony and sloth and you know, desire for power, having all of those things in our community corrupts it. So you need to make a decision. If you want to be, behave that way, then you need to reap that somewhere else. So the community will stand up and protect itself. Love does not mean letting people walk all over you. Love does not mean that when people make mistakes and continue to willfully make mistakes that you have to keep them in your life. You can love them and despise their behaviors. You can keep them in your heart, but not associate with them. And that's really important. So it's important to think about your behaviors, the things that you do. If you are kind and generous and giving, do you reap that from others. And if you don't, well, you may need to consider being kind and generous and loving to other people who will also give that back. And people who follow good orderly direction will give back what they get. It is a definite symbiotic relationship, if you will. So it is important to recognize that good orderly direction and following love and God doesn't mean we do this and we get taken advantage of, that people will stand back and mock us and go, hey, I can do whatever I want and these people are going to cater to my every will. No, that is not what it says. Good orderly direction, God says that we need to be kind to one another. The next part, the one who sows to his own flesh will from flesh reap corruption. So back to that person, that bad apple, if you will, if they are regularly engaging in things to please the flesh, and this doesn't necessarily just mean lust. This can mean a lust for money. This can mean a lust for power. This can mean a lot of other things, but sowing to the flesh means doing what I want because I want it now and I don't care how it impacts everybody else. 
Well, that is not a way to develop abundance. That is not a way to develop healthy relationships. So when you start sowing to your own flesh, you start going after and putting things and what you want above other people, guess what? You are more easily corrupted. If somebody comes along and says, hey, I can help you make that happen. You just have to do X, Y, Z. And the person may be more likely to make choices that are not loving, that are not prudent when there is a reward that they want out there. And that reward is not love. That reward is not a strong community and a strong body of Christ. That reward is about what I want for me. The one who sows to the spirit will from the spirit reap eternal life. We say a lot of times that children learn what they live. Children learn more from what you do than what you say. And when you are sowing to the spirit, when you are acting, following good orderly direction, you are acting in a loving fashion and you are compassionate. You're not being taken advantage of, you're not being mocked, but you are giving love to those who are deserving. You are loving those, even those with bad behaviors. You can, again, you can love them and not like their behaviors. You can love them and set healthy boundaries that say, I'm not going to tolerate that behavior in my life. Uh, and children learn this. Children will start to embrace those behaviors and children will grow up using those behaviors and modeling those behaviors for others. So you reap eternal life because not only are you doing the will of the spirit, not only are you behaving lovingly, but you are also modeling this behavior and that will go on for generations after generations, which can give you eternal life.